Hi friends, it looks like I am live on YouTube right now, which is so incredibly exciting. I cannot wait to share today's launch with you. I'm pulling out your comments right now so I can see all of you guys in the chat. It is so exciting and I just posted a link to the new release. So if you guys want to go over there, open a new window and look at all the products as I show them to you, then you can really see them in detail on the site. And those links help support me as well. So I really appreciate it if you guys use them. Today is a super exciting day. I think the last time that I went live was, when was it, September? October. I had a release in October. It's been a couple months. And honestly, I was a little bit nervous to come on camera today, but nervous because this release is so exciting to me. It might be one of my favorites, and I know that I always say that, but really in this release, we're continuing a lot of the things that you guys loved and that I absolutely fell in love with. So things like lunar pastes, maybe stamping foam. So I'll be sharing all of the products in today's launch, and then I'll be sharing the samples that I made with it, which I had too much fun creating. And then we'll go into and craft with some of the products together live, which is always so much fun. So I see so many of you guys in here. It means the world that you guys are in here supporting me. It's so awesome. So many familiar faces and some new ones, which is exciting. All right, guys. So without further ado, I think we should jump into today's launch. So I'm going to turn down my work surface and get right into it. And I think you guys are going to hopefully love this release as much as I do. So let me flip down to my desk here and we're going to start off with Lunar Pastes. These are so, so exciting. Lunar Paste released last year, kind of middle of the year, and then they went out of stock um, because we had some shortages in some of the materials. And so many of you guys were asking for new colors of the Lunar Paste. And trust me, I was right there with you. I wanted some new colors too. So we released Prom Queen and Triple Berry in the Lunar Paste line. And these two colors, let me just tell you, really kind of help round out the line a little bit more. And of course, there definitely will be more colors as the year goes on, but I thought that these two were totally necessary. So of course, we needed a purple, and then a pink fills in the reds really nicely. And what I love about adding these two colors in is now it makes the line a little bit more filled out and you have a couple more options so that everything is not so primary anymore. So someone said, my Instagram reel sold you on the pink. That's awesome. So here is the pink. This is prom queen. And if you guys haven't seen these before, whoa, on camera, it's doing something weird, but that's how the shine looks. It's almost like just so pearly and iridescent, which is one of my favorite things. Just get that, it's like a hot pink paste. So in the jar, you'll see that you can see the pink, but you can't see the shine as much. The thing that I love about these is once they dry, it really brings out the shine. So it's almost like a little surprise. Once that dries, it just gets super shiny and none of it comes off on your fingers, which is one of my favorite things about it because I love the shine, but I don't love when it comes up on the recipient's hand. So after that, we have Triple Berry, and here is the swatch of Triple Berry. Like, check that out. It's like this deep, rich kind of purple. It's got some warm tones to it, and then when you tilt that in the light, it just becomes that super shiny and gorgeous purple color. I know, guys, I'm telling you, everyone's oohing and eyeing over um, these pastes, and I'm telling you guys, this release is one of my favorites. So I'm really excited um, for this, and I cannot wait to see what you guys do with it. So let's talk about not my computer trying to update right now. This is not the time, <laughs> not during this important of a release. Come on. So um, let me just make sure that we're not going to shut off in the middle of the live. Okay, so here is the pastes. And now one thing that I love about these pastes so much is that you can use them on black cardstock. So if you guys have had these pastes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They show up on black cardstock really well because it's not just a dye that's in these. It's actually really pigmented with that pearl powder. And each one has a separate pearl powder in it. So it's not just using white pearls. It's actually a purple pearl and a pink pearl, which means that when you tilt that in the light, it's going to be shiny and iridescent, but it's going to stay true to that color and it's not just going to become a white cast or a sheen on top of the color. 
So that is these two colors. We have Prom Queen and Triple Berry, which I think really fills out the line of the Lunar Pace for now. And you guys are gonna have so much fun making Valentine's and love themed cards, but really these colors will last you all year long too. Someone said it's their first time seeing these pastes. Yeah, so we gotta introduce you to them too. So they're really creamy and buttery as well. If you haven't seen these pastes, I got a couple videos on them, but you can see that consistency in there is just a lot smoother. So it's not gonna be a super thick texture paste, but it is still gonna hold all of the amazing texture that you give it. So let me just show you really quick. Let me just pull out a scrap piece of cardstock. So we'll pull out a little bit of the lunar paste and you can really see like it holds the peaks that you give it. Some people I think think that just because it's a little bit smoother, it's going to kind of run, but it's really not. It holds all of the amazing texture that you give it and it's really going to create such a cool texture on your project. And of course you could smooth it out like that. And like I said, really the shine really becomes when it dries off um, and you'll see a lot more shine comes through then. So that is the consistency and texture of the paste. Of course, you can take any extra and put it right back in the jar. And this pink is like a hot iridescent pink. I love it. So I'll show more of these later on in the live and also for sure in lots of my videos coming soon. It's one of my favorite products in my line really to work with and just give a nice beautiful accent on your cards. So that is the two paste colors and now let's get into the stamps and stencils and things like that. So starting off we have this beautiful background stamp and this one is called Paisley. I love it. It's hand drawn like all of the stamps in this collection and it just gives such a whimsical and playful feel but I always have just loved the design of Paisley's. I think they are elegant and just beautiful. And again, a lot of this release will be great for Valentine's and love theme cards, but really also all year round too. Like this is just a staple pattern. So of course, like most of my stamps, these do have peel apart pieces in them, which is really exciting. So three of these pieces peel out. So, and then you could put them back in when you're ready to stamp the whole background. But what that means is that you're actually technically getting like a stamp set along with your background stamp. So this piece peels apart, this comes out, and this piece up here. So that means you can use those individually and cut them out and stamp them on your cards in different colors, or you can stamp down the whole background together and get a beautiful effect that way too. I love this design. All right. So here is how it looks stamped out. I stamped this out really quickly before the live yesterday with just a couple of my inks. I think this is Bee Sting, um, Prom Queen, and Crown Me. And I just love that color combination together. And this stamp just comes out so beautifully. It's one of my favorites. And I love like the brush that I used to design it is just so fun. It's got some little irregularities. So it looks hand drawn and that's what I love about it. So. That is the Paisley. All right, next we have Stippled Circles. This is also one of my favorites. It's nice and bold and graphic of a design, which is really just so much fun to use. And we have a couple peel outs in this one. So this center portion peels out. So again, like some of the designs, you can create beautiful stripes with this down your card. So if you want the stripes to be different colors, this is why I love doing peel parts with stripes in them as well. So that you could do the design similar to this and have there be different stripes of color along your card. And it's really easy to stamp those down like that. And then I'll just place it back in so you can also see it goes back in pretty easily and I've got a tip too. So once you kind of press it down like that, if there's still any part that's kind of sticking up, all you have to do is kind of bend the stamp just a little bit like that and it'll kind of form it together and help piece it together. That's one of my biggest tips when it comes to the peel parts. And then you also have four of the circles that peel out individually. So if you want to create almost like a little confetti pattern with these little guys and have them all in different colors or things like that, you totally can. So um, that's what I love about doing different peel aparts is we could do stripes, we could do little images, but we try to make the peel apart as versatile as possible so that you can really go in and it's like I said, almost like having a full stamp set along with your background stamp and it's not any more expensive too, which is 
just amazing. I love that Ranger really does the work along with me to make sure those peel aparts are perfect. Shout out to Taylor. She um, really helps get those cuts actually like absolutely perfect. Even if I have one little tiny part to change just to make sure that everything fits together and will stamp beautifully for you guys. I love it. Yeah, it kind of makes your eyes spin a little bit. One thing that I find is when you're looking at like the black design of the stamp, it's gonna look a little bit more trippy than the actual stamp is. But then when you see it kind of inked up in different colors, it's not nearly as intimidating as it is on the black and gray background. That's one thing that I find with stamps. Um, sometimes the black can be a little bit intimidating, but don't, don't look at that and, and think that it's too much. All right, so. This is so much fun. This one is called Grand Greenery. And if it looks familiar, it's probably because it is. Um, this was actually a background stamp before this. It was called Swirly Ferns, and it's very similar to the background stamp. I did have to change a few things. It wasn't just cut and paste, but I loved that design so much. And I believe that one is actually retiring, sadly. But um, if it's still on the site, you probably could get it if you want it to kind of coordinate. It doesn't match up exactly perfectly because we had to change the design a little bit by adding this kind of line in here and making it so that things connect easier and aren't going to rip apart because stencils are a little bit different than a background stamp. But for the longest time, I wanted this design in a stencil because I thought it would be so cool to do with your lunar paste and just a beautiful flourish as well. So you'll see some cards with this. Um, this one was one of my favorites and it is just so much fun to play with. And again, gives that kind of elegant but still playful effect, um, which I love. And like I said, we do our best to make sure that the stencils are gonna really work for you super well. And in doing that, like here, in all of these leaves, we made them separate from the stem. That way, when you're like blending, it's not going to rip and there's no parts that anything's going to catch on, which I think is super duper important when designing stencils. I think sometimes people don't keep that in mind and then your stencils don't last as long. But we try to, you know, give you as many places as possible where it's connected so that it's not gonna rip on you. Super important. All right, then we have tiny hearts. And again, with Valentine's Day and love cards right around the corner, this one is going to be awesome. So with this stencil, if you wanna use it on bigger projects, it does um, line up. So you can see that it's done kind of um, loose on the edges there so that you can line things up by placing the stencil, you know, with this edge lined up to there so that it interlocks and lines up perfectly. This one has a bunch of tiny little heart designs in it, which I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite stencils, and you'll see in the future how I really use these smaller designs. I just did a video where you kind of layer stencils and things like that, and these smaller designs come in handy for um, techniques like that. So that's why I love these tiny little designs. So I think you'll uh, find that tiny heart is just gonna be so much fun. And I already showed it in this background. It's just fun with the lunar paste, and it really kind of just steals the star of the show when you do it like that. All right. Um, then we have vases. And these vases are so much fun. Um, it might look a little bit weird, right? They're just solid vases that you can kind of blend out and it also does come with all of the masks. So you do have these little masks for the vases as well, so that once you're done blending them, you can mask them off and also blend your background. I find that it's important to include masks and things like that wherever possible with stencils like this, so that you guys can have the most bang for your buck. So they'll come on the front of the stencil, they're attached with little stickers, you just peel them off and you get the awesome um, masks along with the vases. But to introduce this set fully, I do need to bring out another set which is called Sketched Florals. And now this is probably making a little bit more sense. Each one of these vases in this set have the coordinating stencil along with. And these are designed to perfectly and completely line up with your vases. So what that means is once you're done stamping them and they on your card, you can really easily blend and color them in along with your stencils. If you wanna add lunar paste over top of this, you totally could as well. That's why I love to include the stencils. It makes things a little bit more versatile when it comes to blending in and coloring the stamps and maybe giving some things texture as well. So that is the vases set and it perfectly coordinates along with the sketch florals. But now let's look 
at sketch florals a little bit closer. I designed these flowers kind of based off things that were at my house, whether it was live florals at one time or whether it's little fake plants in my house. We have little olive branches in my kitchen. So that was designed after that and I love these guys. So they're perfectly sized to fit in the vases. You can put one or two in each one. You can put like a whole assortment of flowers in there. I love being able to build my own bouquets. So having these certain flowers are really fun. And again, it's kind of a hand-drawn, but still very elegant style with these stamps. So I love it. And those lines kind of help to add a little bit more of shading to the images as well. Um, which is awesome. So yes, these flowers and bases will coordinate together. There's also some lines and textures you can add onto your bases, and then some beautiful sentiments. I love these bold sentiments. I have been using them a ton. We have I adore you, love you, and you are beautiful, as well as hugs. And then we have some handwritten sentiments. So these are done in my handwriting. We have bloom where you are planted, where flowers blossom, so does hope, and thank you. And I just love the handwritten look along with these different flowers. I think it looks so awesome. And uh, Una in the comments says, you are growing so much as a designer, Simon. I love it. Yeah, that's why I really love each release more and more because as I really learn to draw and hone in on exactly what I want to use, the releases have become better and better each time. And I think this one is one of my best. And I just, this, this, uh, stamp set you guys are going to absolutely love. That's why when I was talking about the stencils, I, or the samples, when I was talking about designing those, I was just having nonstop fun playing with this release and I never got stuck because there are just so many different things you could do. So I am loving this one. All right, and again, there will be a link in the description box and in the comment section so you guys can shop. The release isn't over yet, there's still two very exciting things left. This stamp set is also another one of my favorites. It's called Bold Bouquet. And I think this one is gonna be super helpful for a couple different reasons. Number one, I think it's gonna be helpful for the people who want to stamp something and walk out the door really quickly. These are going to give you quick and easy cards every single time. I also think it's gonna be helpful for people like me who are a little bit challenged in creating bouquets of flowers. If you don't know exactly how to line things up or you don't wanna mask things off and work super hard with your designs, Bold Bouquet is going to be great for you. So Bold Bouquet is already situated in bouquets of these flowers. So you have the solid image and you have the lined image which is going to be really awesome. So if you want to, you can actually stamp these together and they do line up, which is really fun. You can stamp this in a bunch of colors and then you can stamp this over the top with black ink or you can use them separately. I've used this one similar to kind of a chalkboard design and then this one is great to stamp the outline or stamp it in different colors and color it in, which has been lots of fun. These kind of fit on an A2 size card. You'll see right here, actually I'll bring up the example quickly. I've stamped this down. You can just see all of the amazing detail in there. Do you see that? Like so much detail in those leaves and in the flowers. And I love how tightly kind of they are put together. Even if you have the other set, this one is really awesome because there's no way that I would have sat around and masked this off as well as it is. Like there's no way. That would have taken me like an hour. So that's what I love about this. And you can see I left a little bit of a border around it so you can cut it out and mat it onto a card if you want to, or you can stamp it like this coming in from the edges. So this is four and one fourth by five and a half. And you can see that little bit of a border you get along the image. And then with this image, you might be saying, well, Simon, I could use stamping foam to get something similar. You can use stamping foam to get something similar, but if you look at this, and I'll show you in the examples in a little bit as well, it's having a little bit of a hard time focusing, you get so much detail with this stamp that I thought it was so important to include, right? So the bottom stamp is a negative of the top stamp, but look at all of that amazing detail in there. You cannot tell me that you can get this with stamping foam. I've tried and I know that stamping foam, um, it gives you beautiful results, but it doesn't capture every tiny little detail in these stamps. So that's what I wanted this stamp for. And I'm gonna say this one is probably best used in a stamping tool or a misty. You could totally use it on an acrylic block too, but you might have to water it down a little bit um, just because of how solid and bold it is that I found using it in a misty and getting some blended effects are really my favorite ways to use it. 
So then we have some sentiments like hello, thank you, thinking of you, and friend. And then you can pair those up with some of these sentiments. So we have, I'm so grateful to have you in my life, sending hugs and prayers, I'm here for you, I love you, you'll get better soon, and you are so strong. I think these sentiments are great for encouragement, for, like I said, thinking of you cards or friendship cards. These are some of my favorites. And then, of course, I included some basic sentiments so that if you were just making note cards to send to a friend or to have really basic and easy cards for, it's easy to just stamp that down, color it in quickly, and then stamp the sentiment and you're on your way to go. So I thought it was important to have a set like this, like Bold Bouquet, where everything is already situated, masked off, and created into a scene for you. So I love it. Yes, it is the same thing, just different size florals. So these are a lot smaller and it's already put into the bouquet for you, which I thought was super fun and important. So different scales and also different scenes. All right, yeah, it would be really cool foiled, I agree. Someone in the comments said that it would be awesome foiled. All right, guys, so now is the moment you guys have all been waiting for, and it's the release of the new stamping foam. When I tell you guys I'm so excited for this, I have been waiting for a long time, and I'm so excited to finally be able to show you guys. So, the stamping foam comes in a pack that looks like this. It's similar to the old stamping foam, and I bet you guys can't even see what's different about it right now. It comes with two blocks in a pack this time, and it says up here that it's heart cut which is awesome. So I'll pull this open for you guys. All you have to do is just peel off the top header and it comes in a plastic bag. So if you want to, you can keep it and reseal it as storage, but usually I just keep them in a little container. All right, we'll pull out this little staple. Perfect, right out of the package for you guys. And this has two pieces of foam in it. I am so excited to show you guys. So you can probably see it now. This is the heart cut stamping foam. And it is, let me tell you, perfectly cut in the center there. You guys saw how amazing this fits together. It's almost a little bit difficult to put back in, but you totally can slide that back together and have it as one piece. So this comes with a pack of two hearts and two outside border pieces. So you guys saw how he just pulled it out apart like that. And here's what's really exciting about this as well. You guys have been asking, pleading, and begging for it to be the same size as an A2 size card because some of you guys weren't as fond of the size of the old stamping foam where it had a little bit of a border around it. This is not replacing this stamping foam at all. This will still be here because I still think that this kind of border with the design is so, so important, right? So nothing is replacing each other, but this just gives you more options. So this covers the A2 size card and some because I wanted it to be able to stick off the edges a little bit and not for you to have to like really focus when you're lining it up, which is exciting. And then this size heart fits perfectly on the A2 size card, either centered or a little bit off the edge like that. And then you could also use this piece to create a beautiful center white heart with a full color design. So. I can see you guys already going crazy in the stamping foam uh, in the comments. Um, yeah, the hearts are the same size in one package, yet they are. So we do this to give you two of the foams just in case because I know you guys like to use the heck out of your stamping foam and it shrinks a little bit over time. You can reuse it over and over, but it'll shrink and get a little bit dingy. And so I do recommend like if you really love the stamping foam and Kells in the comments says, don't get rid of them. I love them. I have 10 packs. So literally like I'll purchase a lot of different packs of this. In fact, I have quite a few packs to use because I go through this stuff really fast. Whether I keep a design embedded into it or whether it gets a little bit dingy over time, it's important to have several of them. So here are some that I've been using already for some time. You can see, like I said, it gets a little bit dingy. It doesn't affect the use of your stamping foam at all. So like I'll still keep using these, but I opened a new pack just to show you guys the difference between kind of what it looks like when you've been using it for some time and um, when it's new. Now, when you've been using it for some time, like I said, the foam does shrink a little bit. The heart still fits in there, but you can see that it fits a little bit looser into there. So it doesn't have as um, 
as like tight of a fit over time. So that's important to note too. If that's important to you, maybe have a couple packs, maybe have one that you don't use as much so that it fits a little bit cleaner like that. It really doesn't matter um, unless if you're using them together, which I'll show you a little technique like that today. All right, guys, so that's the stamping foam. If you guys haven't seen the stamping foam um, yet, it'll be very exciting to have you guys see the heart cut and also there's still the original on the site as well. All right, so let me show you guys really quickly. Let's start off with, of course, what you guys are probably most excited about, the stamping foam, and then we'll move around and, and keep doing other things as well. So I'm going to show you guys how I like to use the stamping foam. And um, yeah, so I like to pull in an acrylic block. I have a larger acrylic block here, um, and there might be something like this coming in the future in the line. So just keep your eyes peeled, but for now you can use any sort of kind of hard plastic that's a little bit larger, and that'll be really helpful for you. So, anybody who's asking about different stamping foams, um, I'm not gonna answer any questions about what's coming in the future, but just to let you know, this year is gonna be a year of stamping foam, so just get excited about that. But I'm not gonna spoil anything, come on, you guys think, you guys think I'm gonna spoil all the secrets in one live? <laughs> All right, so I like to take a little bit of painter's tape or masking tape um, and tape the stamping foam down. The reason why I like to use it with a piece of harder plastic, especially with this larger stamping foam, is it helps to get like the whole solid image printed. Now you totally could just use the foam as it is, and that is helpful as well if you just press down with your hands. It's almost like a stamp in itself, so just test out both ways and see which one that you like better because it really is all up to you on how you like to use it and how it works for you. If you liked the acrylic block with the smaller stamping foam, you might like it with this one as well. So I'm just going to then place that down onto an acrylic block, press that down, give it some good pressure, and there we're using it all as a rectangle at once. So this is what I like to start off with, with um, the stamping foam. I like to leave the heart in there when I'm first printing it, especially with the first couple prints. Well, it still fits perfectly like this because it's going to help you. Yes, you could totally use it as one solid piece. Now, will the heart kind of print a little outline? Maybe, but I'm going to show you kind of, I'll show you guys. Just stay with me here. So um, now we're going to heat it up, but I'm going to grab an image or a texture that I want to use. And like I always talk about, you can use textures around your house. For the sake of today's video, I'm just gonna use the Paisley stamp because this is what I just released and I wanna show you guys how to use this. But a lot of people always say, why use a stamp with a stamp? I'll show you in a little bit. Um, but you can also use dies and bossing folders and lots of different textures around your house to print with as well. So I'm gonna bring in my heat tool here and you wanna have everything ready because you're gonna to wanna to move even quicker with this because it's such a large stamping foam. You want to move quickly and then heat it down because it's gonna start cooling off pretty fast. So I'm gonna bring in my heat tool and heat this up. I usually say about 10 to 15 seconds but you might wanna do 20 with this because it's a larger foam. And you're gonna to wanna to move your heat tool all around. Keep it moving as you heat up your stamping foam. And you can already see that heart in the center is shrinking a little bit. That's just natural. That's what's going to happen with this. And you can see right when I press that down, I didn't think too much about it. It might even be a little bit crooked on here, but you want to give good pressure into that right away so that nothing transfers or nothing waits. Now this isn't horrible. You could totally print it like this, um, but I think I'm going to try again. That's, that's the beauty of the stamping foam, and actually I'm going to stand up while I do it because I need to give some good pressure. Alright, so this is the beauty of the stamping foam, and actually I'm glad that I showed this, because you can see now the design is easily able to disappear, goes right back to flat, so this is how the foam is reusable. So if you don't have the foam before this, you now know kind of how it works. and we'll give it really great pressure all around. I couldn't do that while I was sitting. All right, that is the kind of image that we want. Perfect. 
So you'll see it's probably not still as solid as it would be on normal stamping foam. And that's just because of the surface area of this foam. It might be a little bit of a learning curve for you guys to go from such a small little foam and like really deep impressions to then this. I always say like the deep impression thing, even on the smaller foam is kind of a myth. Like even this, this small little impression here will transfer even though it's not as solid as this top part. And you'll see that in a second. So let's go in with our stamping foam and do the stamping now. So when it comes to doing the stamping portion, I then like to peel the heart center out. Um, I like to use them separately, but I'll show you guys that you can put them together afterwards. So what I do is I just peel that little heart out and actually the little heart right now works along with the acrylic block that we already have in our collection. So this is one of the Simon Hurley Create Acrylic Blocks. It's on the Ranger site that I've been linking, um, and I love this. It comes in two sizes in one pack. You have a smaller sentiment block as well, but this one works great with the old stamping foam and also the heart cut center. All right, so let's do, um, let's do the background first. So I'm gonna go in and stamp on this background. Let's use some, hmm. Let's do some like blues and greens. Let's switch it up. I was gonna say, let's do some like Valentine's Day colors, but we'll do that on the actual heart. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm just going to lightly press on my ink. Now the light pressure is kind of key, especially when there's something as small as this. You don't want the ink to go into the um, surfaces that aren't as raised up, right? So then we'll go in with a little bit of later gator. Just gonna use my blues and greens from the line and ink that up. All right, and when it comes to the stamping foam, um, again, I'm really repeating a lot of the different things. So like, if you've used stamping foam, you're like, oh, Simon, I know. But uh, when it comes to, if anybody's new to this, um, stamping foam, when I ink it up, I like to use um, my ink pads here. My Simon Hurley Create inks work really well with it, but you can use any sort of ink pad. And I swirl the ink on. I don't do that tapping motion. I find when it comes to the tapping motion, here's what's gonna happen. If I tap this ink on, that's what you get. You get all those different lines, right? So when it comes to the stamping foam, I swipe because you get a much more solid and intense color and you also get a much more full coverage on the stamping foam. So there we have our fully complete design. Now, when it comes to doing any spraying of the stamping foam, I like to spray it down a little bit just to get a more solid inked image. So I hold it pretty far away, and then I'm going to go in and mist it down. Now, I do quite a bit of mist, but I do it from that far distance. So you'll see here, with that fine mister, you can barely see any mist on that surface. We're not getting globs of water and ruining the design. We're just doing a light misting so that it helps transfer it. Then I'll start at the bottom here. I just line up the bottom like edge. And then like I said, it should line everything up perfectly with the center of your card then. Give it some good pressure so that it transfers. And there we have our design. Oh my gosh, guys. That is just stunning. So this is why I love this stuff so much. A heart, and you guys might be thinking like, oh, well, a heart is seasonal. I can only use this around Valentine's Day. You are incorrect. <laughs> a heart is one of my most used shapes. So that's why we decided to do it in this heart cut stamping foam. Because if you've noticed on some of my cards, like I use heart dies the most of anything. I either use it in the center like this, or I offset it to the side a little bit. And that is exactly what I use. So you'll be using this all year round and like doing little, uh, you can either put a sentiment or an image in here um, and really just create and create with this. It's so much fun. So now let's set this off to the side and we will go into stamping down this, this little heart. So with this little guy, we'll do Valentine's Day colors just for you guys. So we'll go in with a little bit of Love Struck to start off with. I love this kind of like red pink color. Love struck with one of my newer ones. And then we'll go in with a little bit of Prom Queen. You can see that swiping motion just applies the ink so well. And then we'll go in, you know, 
for Valentine's Day, I know everyone just goes in with like pinks and purples, but I like to make it a little bit less traditional. And I like to bring in either an orange or a yellow too with it. I just kind of stick with warm colors and I find that it works. Again, go in and mist that down. And then we'll bring in our cardstock again. And I'll just stamp it right down in the center, just to show you guys, but I'll show you examples in a second where I did it off the edge and things like that. And I think that stamping them off the edge and, and doing other placements of them makes it more interesting too. And you can also do pattern building and stuff along with the shapes. So there is that separate heart. Don't you just love that? Oh, I think it's so amazing. So there are the two things that you can get with the stamping film, whether you do the outside border or you do the inside heart and you do different pattern building and things like that. Yes, you totally can do with lunar paste. I like to apply my lunar paste down on the surface and then I usually take a brayer or a foam and I uh, dab it down onto the, the stamping foam. Now I always spray it as well, even with the lunar paste and I um, like to do it quicker with the lunar paste and clean it quickly because lunar paste has a quick dry time. All right, now I'm gonna share one more thing. So we're gonna go in with the stamping foam, same colors, because I don't want to clean it off right now. And I want to show you the, the warms and cools contrast that you can get. So we'll go in with overzealous, or sorry, that was psych. Then later gator, clear skies. and a little bit of no diving. No diving has quickly become one of my favorite blues. It's just like the perfect kind of in-between blue color. Peel that off and then again, I'll bring this off to the side and just spray it a little bit. All right. So again, I did this one a lot quicker so you can really see it's pretty quick to easily apply the ink down to there. Line it up with the bottom edge and then stamp it down. All right. So there that is stamped, it's not as perfect. I didn't get all of the little details as I did before, but I did it really quickly. So you can see that there's some details missing there, but um, there is that print. And also, I forgot to point out, like this is the bottom there where we thought that there wasn't as much of a pattern, right? There is, it, it still very much so shows up. So when you're using the stamping foam and you're like, oh, that's a little bit too thin, just try stamping with it. And if you don't love it, you can always retry it. But 10 out of 10 times, it's gonna turn out like this. Uh, I was never really super excited with the impression that I got, but it's just because it's such a larger surface area that it's not gonna go in as deep. All right, then, I'm gonna actually use this one just because it has a cleaner line around the edge. Then we'll go in with our heart cut stamping foam and we're gonna do a contrast. Because we use cool colors in the background, I'm moving into now using the warm colors. Love struck, prom queen, and a little bit of guppy. Again, go in and mix that down. And this time, we're going to line up the bottom corner and then line up the sides and it should line up perfectly. And there we have that heart cut stamping foam inside of each other. So this is so much fun. Like I said, now you can really do a lot with it. So that is why I did the pattern together like that at the beginning, where we put it together so that it continues when you line things up. So all of the patterns and designs are continuing, but it's now two different colors and you have that heart cut in the center. So much fun. So, like I said, now you've got the border, the inside heart, or you can use both together. 
And that's why I was like, oh, you might want two different packs just in case if it shrinks a little bit, the heart is gonna get a little bit smaller. So if you want to do this technique again, you'll probably need to open a new pack after you've used it for quite some time. Um, but this is just so much fun and so stunning once it's all done. I love how these effects turn out. All right. So I'm going to show you guys quick now. I know there's going to be some questions about this, so I wanted to just quickly share it with you. With my ink pads, all I do to clean these off is go in with a little bit of water and just start wiping it off. And you'll see here it comes pretty clean off that stamping foam and it's not going to stain it too badly. Now, if you're using another ink pad brand, I can't promise anything um, about if it's going to stain or not. One thing that I do recommend is if you're using another one that's not coming off or being a little bit stubborn, maybe use a little bit of rubbing alcohol to kind of clean them off. Um, you could also try using a little bit of stamp cleaner on it and that could probably help clean it off. But some people's inks are a little bit more permanent than mine, so they won't come off as cleanly or easily, but it doesn't really matter because it's not going to harm your stamping foam, whether it's stained or not. So just keep that in mind too. It's not causing any harm to it if it's stained, it's just um, going to be a little bit of a different color. So. You know what I just realized, guys? I never even showed you my samples because I was so, so excited about the stamping foam that I just decided to skip them. <laughs> so let me bring in a couple of samples here. So this is using um, the sketch florals as well as the paisley background. So this is kind of how you can put those scenes together using the flowers. I just put a little tiny piece of tape at the top of the glass and um, that's all I have to do is just tape that off and then stamp that down and it's really easy to mask off and quickly put that together. All right, next card. Again, using that paisley background, but this time I used the heart cut stamping foam. And this is what I was talking about. So I impressed the heart cut stamping foam with the paisley. So I created that paisley heart stamp and then I repeated it up and down. And that creates this beautiful pattern down your card. I used You Are So Beautiful from the Sketch Florals and then that Paisley on this side there as well. This one, I used the Stippled Circles and um, I kind of stamped that with a bunch of different colors and then I cut it around the edge to add a little bit of interest and use that same sentiment. And also, if you guys can see, like all throughout these cards, these little dots and things like that, I did with the Lunar Paste. So you just take a little brush, even the center of this, and add a little bit of lunar paste in there and it just gives a little bit of shine as well. All right, so on this one I used the stippled circles background. You guys can see now that when you do it with different colors and things like that, your eyes won't go wonky or anything. Um, and then I actually used a really old stamp. This one, again, might be retiring soon, kind of sad, but it's one of my favorites. It's called Flower Garden and it's just this really bold, floral stamp. So I used that and then pressed it in the heart. So literally keep going back with um, old stamps and things like that because the stamping foam will really bring a whole new life to them and I just love how that looks. As I was telling you guys, grain greenery is one of my favorite stencils and here I went in, so the first layer I went in and I stenciled it down with all the different colors of my inks. So I used Bee Sting, Prom Queen, Traffic Cone, Slippery When Wet, Later Gator, Clear Skies, and Triple Berry. I'm getting good at saying all the names fast now. And then I shifted my stencil. You can see all that beautiful shine because now we have all of these different colors that coordinate with the lunar paste. So I used the same exact color. I went back through, shifted my stencil a little bit and filled in some of the gaps. And I filled it in with some of that lunar paste. But this time I applied the lunar paste with the sponge so it dries really fast and it's not as raised, but it still gives all of that beautiful shine and depth and dimension. So this might, one might be one of my favorite cards I created. It is just so stunning and that's just simply using the Grand Greenery stencil. So I told you guys that's why I wanted it with the stencil so I can go in and do some paste designs with it too. Just so much fun. Check out that shine. All right, so this is again using the heart cut stamping foam. Here I used Grand Greenery in the background to impress it into there so you can totally use your stencils as well to give that good impression. And then here, all I did was tape off the bottom of this heart to mask it off. And I stamped some of the sketch florals in there and then I left this one kind of hanging over the edge a little bit, but I masked it down here so you can see the heart shape easily. 
thought that was super cool. It looks like those flowers are kind of popping out and blooming out of that heart, which is so much fun. So that's what's fun about that window there is you can really put your focal point right inside that window, still have a cool background and that cool heart shape if you're making kind of a love themed card. And it just creates such a beautiful focal point. And this background was just like minutes. It was so simple to create. And uh, you have that beautiful masking too. This one I love. It's using tiny hearts. And with these tiny hearts, I went in and I did the tiny hearts one way. And then I flipped it and I did the tiny hearts the other way. And I filled in the area. But again, but again, <laughs> I went in with the exact same colors as my inks. So Bee Sting, Prime Queen, and Triple Berry. They now have their own lunar paste. And I went in and did the reverse image with the lunar paste. So one of those is done with the inks, one of them is done with the lunar paste, and you can really see like that matches the colors perfectly. That's what I love about the lunar paste in this line is it matches the colors so beautifully that you can use them all together. And this is again, sketched florals. I went in and I cut those two out, kind of layered them together like that to create my own bouquet, and I watercolored them in using my inks really beautifully and easily. All right. This one, I went in with bold bouquet and I went in and just stamped that down super quick and easy and I colored it in with my inks. Like, how simple is that? This is what I was talking about, guys. Like, I wanted a stamp set where I could stamp it down, color it in or ink blend it or whatever you need to do really fast or do a watercolor background and stamp this on tap, right? Um, and then it's so simple that all you need to do is stamp a sentiment and you're out of the house, right? And with this, all I did was just go in with the scissors and cut that out. You don't need to, but it's just a really simple thing to do. If you wanted to step it up a little bit, you could just go in, poke your scissors through, and then start cutting right around the edge. And it's like pretty easy outline to cut through. But you don't need to do that. All right, this is that lined image, right? This is what I'm telling you guys. Like, you can get some detail, you can see like with the stamping foam, it gives you the detail of those images, but it also like gives a little bit of a wider line, which is not something that I really wanted. I wanted you guys to be able to get such a detailed look with this. So I went into my Misty stamping tool, I placed this stamp down, it's the more solid one, and then I went in with my blending tools and I tapped on this color, and each time I stamped it down. And I stamped it down several times of each color, so it, it's gonna take a little bit more work to stamp that solid image, but boy is it beautiful once it's all complete. I just love it. Cal's, I do not have an example of them using it together, but you can kind of tell like when you stamp that onto each other, it, it'll fit perfectly like this and um, you'll get black lines then. So if you've stamped this background and you could probably watercolor it if you want a little bit of a looser line and then you can just line it up and stamp the black down over top. This, again, so simple. I went in on a piece of brown cardstock went in and stamped that lined image, and all I did was heat emboss it, put down a sentiment, and literally run out the house with your card that you can bring to a party, right? How simple is that? So easy, I like to think about the people who want easy cards, because sometimes that's me, right? Sometimes I'm like, oh, I wanna stamp this, and I want something so quick and easy, and that's what this set really is. This is Sketch Florals, and this is a slimline card. I never want to just like put out products. I know I put out slimline products in the past and then some people are like, oh, well, let's move on to the next trend, right? Let's move on to the next thing. But I still love slimline cards and I loved that with the slimline design, I was able to fit all the different vases on here as well as all of the flowers coming out of the vases. So again, with the masking, it's so simple. I didn't do any fussy cutting for this. I just masked off each vase with a little bit of tape over the top, stamped down my flowers, watercolored the flowers in, and then with the with the faces, I went in with the vases stencil and all I did was place it over top and ink blend them in really fast and easy. So quick. And then this one, all I did was use the heart cut. Again, this is that same older stamp set. This is Flower Garden, one of my favorites. <laughs> I think we might need to bring it back in a different format, maybe a stencil or something because it's one of my favorite designs. And then um, it left that open heart because I was using the heart cut design to impress that background. So then I went in, I stamped down one of the main images again using black and I heat embossed that. So that's a cool way like 
let's say you're using the Paisleys and you want to use a peel apart section of it, that's a cool way to do the whole background and then to have something coordinate, all you need to do is stamp down one of those images, cut it out, and you've got your main image there, right? And I like to kind of put things going around the heart to kind of jazz it up a little bit. And then I use one of the sentiments from the Sketch Florals stamp set called, uh, it says, where flowers blossom, so does hope. And I just love how that finishes it off. So those are all of my different samples that I made using the release. I think you guys are going to fall in love and just have so much fun using them as much as I did. It was such a blast. And um, I do want to say too, on the website, under each stamp set, the clear stamps pages, there is also a digital die download. So you can use those in your machines like a scan or I'm not sure, maybe a Cricut. Um, and a silhouette machine, I believe. Um, those are going to work best with those different files. So you can then purchase the digital file as well as the stamp set, and you can cut those out as well. Usually I just sit around and fussy cut because I like to do that. But if you're not into fussy cutting, there are some of those digital files for you too. All right, guys. So should I show you one more thing? What do you guys think? Let me see. Someone just said they're going to get the garden stamp. Yeah, the flower garden stamp is one of my favorites. I know that we are retiring it, but if it's still in stock on the site, run and grab it. There are some products that are still on the site, but they're retiring. So like grab as fast as you can because <laughs> they'll be gone after that. So I think I'm going to show you guys just how easy this is to stamp down and mask off the vases. I'm getting lots of congrats. Thank you guys so, so much. It means the world to me and like, like I said, this release is one of my favorites to um, share with you guys, and it's one of my favorites that I've designed. It's just so fun and stunning. So we'll just go in here. I think let's do this one and this, and then we'll do this and this. All right. Th these are so much fun, and like I said, I literally designed these around things that were on my house, like different vases and, and textures that I saw um, at different places too. Like I just collect inspiration from all different places. Some are like real florals that I drew after. So just, I keep lots of photos uh, for inspiration. So when it comes to stamps, I like to just, if there's a solid area like this, I like to just kind of lift the stamp up and make sure that it's pressed down. Again, I'm just using my acrylic blocks here. All right. I'll place that off to the side. And then I'll go in and do a little bit of stamping. So I'm gonna ink it up with a little bit of black ink. And we'll stamp this down. Awesome, I love how that looks. And then <laughs> when it comes to this, I'm going to bring in my other acrylic blocks. Guys, I cannot even stress to you how much I love these. Like I didn't just make the acrylic blocks to make them. I made them because they're my absolute favorite blocks ever and they're all I need. So all I've been doing is like, I just have bought a lot of these different packs and I keep them right in the drawer next to me. So I am never running out of acrylic blocks, let me tell you that. All right, so let's go in with my mint tape now. And here's how I mask them off. So it's so simple. There's no like fussy cutting involved when it comes to masking off these guys. And of course, like I said, if you want to mask off the actual vases to build a background, you can do that because there's the masks in the set. So I don't mask off to the top line. I actually mask off right below the top line to that second line because that's the rim of the vase. So you're still actually going to see the stem go into the vase then. It's important that you mask on that second line. All right, so once we've got that, I'm going to go in and I just ink up like, I don't even do the whole flower because you're not gonna see that part of the stem. Let me just make sure things are gonna fit here. Perfect. All right, so we'll go in with this flower first. Kind of make it leaning that way. Stamp it down. Oh, don't you just love that? And it gives, that like beautiful hand-drawn look that it's got. Then I'll peel off this tape and look at that. Perfect masking every time. How many do I have of the acrylic box? One, two, three, four, five, six. I've opened six packs so far and I might even open more. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, they're my favorites. 
I don't just make products to make products. I make them because I personally want and need them. It's truly the, uh, the truth behind it all. But I know if I like it, that, that there's going to be people out there that like it too. All right. We've inked that one up. And then we'll go in and peel it off. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, I just love it. So then with this, I usually like to go in and heat emboss things. So when it comes to um, stamping, usually if you've seen all of my videos, like the heat embossing, the clear heat embossing comes out right after the black ink. It's one of my favorite little tricks that I've learned because it just adds a nice shine to it. It kind of intensifies the black lines and it makes it look really finished. <laughs> and where that tape was, it gives, it's giving me a little bit of stick. So if you have that issue, um, going in with a dry brush and just brushing off any of that excess embossing powder is going to help. I didn't really think about that. The tape kind of messes it up. So maybe heat emboss the vases first before everything else. So then I'm gonna go in and just quickly heat set this. So like I said, guys, the intensity of those black lines just go up when you use that black embossing powder. But also I like it when I'm watercoloring too because I'm gonna watercolor in just a second. So um, it helps kind of keep everything in the lines, um, which is really important when you're kind of watercoloring. And if, if you struggle with things bleeding outside the lines, this is going to really help you. So now it's time to go in and ink these up. I'm gonna go in and just zoom this in a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better. And let's go in and share how I do this now. So with this, I like to bring in my vases stencil set and I'll just really quickly do it. You guys will see how simple this part is. I'll line that up with my vase. I don't even tape it down to be honest. And then we'll go in, let's see, for this vase, I'll do woof a nice gray color. I just go in with my blending tool really simply and easily. And here's how I like to blend it. All right, here's the trick with vases. So I go in from one edge. All right, one edge done, check. And then I go in from the other edge. And I leave that center point white because the highlight on there is gonna make the vase look round. So it's gonna be shadowed on the edges and then it's gonna come up and give you a nice highlight in the center. So that's how I like to color in these vases. And you guys can see like, how simple was that? And then with this one, I'll do a little bit of breakup blue. I like the muted tones. It almost makes it look like it's a glass vase. And here, again, we've separated the handle from the stencil just to make sure that it doesn't rip. Made that nice and easy. And I'm gonna line it up and do the same exact thing. One edge and then the opposite. And that's just my way of doing it. You could do it any sort of way, but that is my favorite way to make sure that they are nice and round looking. All right, so. Now when it comes to the actual flowers themselves, let me show you guys just quickly how I would watercolor those in. So with when it comes to the olive branch, I'm gonna use a little bit of Viper, and also I'll use a little bit of Psyche. And let's bring in a little bit of fake plant too. I like to bring in lots of different greens to really vary it up. And then when it comes to the other flower, I'll use a little bit of Shooting Star, which is my bright, bright yellow. And then I'll bring in a little bit of prom queen. 
for the center. All right, I think that's good. And I add everything down onto my surface. Now you're, you're gonna wanna use a, um, a non-stick mat or a protective surface. And I also like to use this little tiny brush. And I just spray the water on my non-stick surface here so that, um, so that it doesn't spill all over the place. Ask me how I've, uh, I've already experienced that before. So what I do is I go in with a layer of water to start out with. So just plain water, this has no color in it. And I just go onto the surface and water everything down. This is going to give me a nice surface so that I can easily add color, but it's not going to sink into the surface right away. So now you can see I'm going into the yellow, the shooting star, and this makes it so that I can really easily blend things down. If you go onto the dry card stock right away without you know, adding that layer of water first, it's not gonna give you time to move and blend your color. It's going to sink into the card stock and just become really dark, which you don't want it to be. You want everything to kind of flow like a nice little watercolor look. And so this tip is one of my biggest lifesavers. If you guys are struggling with watercolor and you don't do that, that's one thing that you just need to do is add water down first because it'll give you a nice solid layer of color that you can then build upon. So here I'm gonna go into a little bit of prom queen and blend some of that color out. Here I'm still adding water to my color and just blending them together. So the water is your, really your friend when it comes to blending and adding color down smoothly. You want to add quite a bit of water with it. Not too much where it's puddling on the surface, but you just want it to be able to blend together with that water. All right, and then when it comes to adding depth and dimension and shadows with the color, I go in with pretty much no water or a little bit less, and then I'll go in and add that darker color to the center. You can see that pink just dipping right into that color and adding a lot less water. And that's gonna give you a lot more depth to that color. It's the same exact color, but it just is way less watered down. So it's a lot darker and more saturated then. And you can see there's still a little bit of water on that surface, so it's still easy to blend together and it's not gonna be too harsh. I hope these watercolor tips kind of help because I know sometimes people get the set and they struggle to color or things like that. So use whatever color medium you're familiar with or really like, but this is um, like one of my favorite methods. It's, it's foolproof, really. Um, I was not the best at watercoloring before this, but I learned a couple different techniques. And one of them also that's really important is just having this brush. This is just a Ranger Artist watercolor brush. I don't really use water brushes. If you do use a water brush because you like the fine tip, maybe just keep the water out of the actual barrel, unless if you're traveling. But um, the reason being is I used to use one and I would get way too much water on the surface. But you really need to control how much water you have and that's going to affect kind of the image that you get. I don't use a ton of water when I'm painting. Even that first layer of water that I add down is just enough to get the paper wet, but not create a whole pool. Um, Someone asked what watercolor paper I'm using. I'm actually just using my Stark White cardstock. This is my Simon Hurley Create Stark White cardstock. I find that it takes the water pretty nicely. Um, I do, that's why I do uh, the heat embossing first. I find otherwise it might kind of bleed outside of the lines, but otherwise like this paper is my favorite. It takes the inks really nicely and you can see like I'm blending together colors and it's not pilling or anything like that, which is really nice. And one of my favorite things about that too then is it matches my cardstock perfectly. So I'm only using one cardstock. So when I complete the rest of the card, if I've cut these out, it's gonna match the color really well. So that's why I stick to just the uh, Stark White cardstock because it's what I like and what I use. All right, so now when it comes to like little tiny leaves like this, do you need to add the layer of water down first? It's not mandatory, but again, I still find that it helps kind of blend things together, but because it's such a small area, it doesn't matter as much if you get as super even of a color or like if you can blend super well because it's not as big of an area. Here I'm using Viper. I like to really switch up the greens that I use because some of them will have like an olivey tint to them. And because we're coloring an olive branch, olive branches, I do want to give it that more olivey and kind of deeper tone. So that's where this uh, Viper really comes in handy. I think it's a, just a beautiful color to do these leaves with. All 
All right, and this is like really simple to do. I just have that little small brush and simply just go in with the color. And you can see like barely any water I'm using. Again, you don't really want the color to like puddle up on here. You just want a little tiny bit enough to get the color on. All right, and also at this time is when I would usually like, again, I like to vary it up. So you could just leave it as just the one green, but I'm gonna go in with a little bit of later gator and also just dot some of that color in here and there just to add some variation, right? Because no leaves are all one color. That's just not reality. So I like to just go in and honestly, pretty messily go in and just like slop on some of that other green. All right. And that, my friends, is how I watercolor this. Now I also, I missed the fact that there's literally olives on there <laughs> and I drew it. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Gur, which is my brown color, and just do the little tiny olives. And that's where a brush as detailed as this comes in handy. All right. And that, my friends, is how I would go about watercoloring these images. And I hope you found that part helpful. Um, I know that whenever I do watercoloring like that, some people ask kind of how they get the look and what I'm using. So I hope that by walking you guys kind of through the whole process and doing it together, you guys are able to kind of see, you know, the different things that I do, the different tips and tricks that I have to share um, because they've really helped me kind of improve my watercoloring too with ink pads. And so that's made really easily then. Yes, slop is a very technical term um, to, to use in painting, of course. Um, all right, so I left a link again in the chat. Those links help support me if you guys use them to shop the release. And once again, let me just show you a couple of samples and do a little bit of a recap of the release. So, of course, we have everyone's pride and joy, which I think is uh, probably going pretty fast, the heart cut stamping foam. And then we've got lots of different stamps and stamp sets, which was super exciting. I love all of the different examples that I was able to make with these products. And um, of course, the Lunar Paste, which we didn't get to dive into too much in today's live, but I will definitely be revisiting these in future videos. So if you purchase them, don't feel like you're not going to get the education on them. I've already got lots of videos using the Lunar Paste, but there's going to be more, especially with these two fun, beautiful colors. So I want to thank you guys all so, so much. I'm reading all of your comments and I really do appreciate how supportive you guys are of the release. It truly means the world to me. We spent a long time coming out with that foam and getting it over uh, here and creating it and things like that and making sure that it was absolutely perfect. So like I said, more will be coming in the stamping foam realm, but I'm excited to see what you guys do with this heart cut stamping foam and with all the other products that are in this release. You guys really always bring them to life after they come out. So when you do get these products in hand, if you end up purchasing them, be sure to tag me on Instagram, tag Ranger as well, and use our hashtag Simon Hurley Create and Ranger Inc. so that we can see all of your amazing projects. If you even wanna film a video and post it on YouTube, I always love seeing you guys craft and create. And I love visiting visiting and commenting as well. So guys, thank you so much for joining me. Again, I'll leave that link one last time in the chat. It's down in the description box down below if you're interested in any of the products you saw in today's live. But more than anything, guys, I really appreciate you all just hanging out with me and spending the afternoon crafting, whether you were sneaking in at work or whether you're off of work and you were able to craft with me. Um, I was thankful to have all of you guys. And if you saw the replay, hey everyone, thank you for joining after the live as well. It means so much to me. All right, guys, I'll see you on Instagram and all over the place. I'll be sharing this release, so be on the lookout for that. Have a wonderful and blessed rest of your day.